What's going on YouTube? It's Deej back again with another video. And today we're talking about my week two NFL power rankings. Hopefully you guys enjoyed week one of football. Uh, it was great to see it back on the TV. Fortunately, some of the games were a little disappointing, but we'll talk about that as we go along throughout today's video. And just so we get ahead of it before anybody asks, I am updating uh, the numbers, you know, who's moving up X amount of spots, who's moving down. That is based off my way too early preseason rankings. So some of the numbers may be more variable, but that's also because I've had some time to kind of sit and marinate my thoughts. So some of the numbers are kind of baked into that as well. But let's go ahead and start by talking about 32 up to 25. Uh, that should be 25 at the top of the Buccaneers, but fire the graphics guy, right? Cardinals comes in at last. Arizona fans... You know, this is the type of season you're in for, man. Yeah, it was a scrappy game. You kept it close with Washington, but I think that's a little bit more to say about the Commanders than it does about the Cardinals. But, uh, you know, you know, Cam Thomas gets the scoop in six, and, you know, Dennis the Barbarian Gardak keeps making some plays and becomes, a, you know, an all-time nickname legend. But you're going to be a bad team this year. Embrace that. Get a high draft pick. That's ultimately the goal, and that's going to make you a better squad in a year or two's time. Then we get the Houston Texans at 31. You know, it wasn't a great game, and there's definitely some, you know, some learning curves. Uh, you know, first time head coach, first time OC, rookie quarterback. There's definitely some growing pains, but there's also some stuff there that excited me, like a Will Anderson. Got to see a little bit of Tank Dell too. So another team that's just kind of getting, they're still working in the right direction. Um, and ultimately, I think this is a team that I feel will see their impact by week 17. Uh, versus the Cardinals where it's like it's going to take another offseason before we see it. I bet the Houston Texans by the end of this year are, are open out of this column, to be honest with you. I think they're going to get better week over week. Then we get to the Panthers. They're down a spot. I, I still you know, think the Panthers are going to be a good team. Um, you know, J.C. Horn's injury, that's a little tough. We'll see how much time he misses. He's a really good player, but finds a way to always miss some time. I think Bryce Young overall looked pretty good. The two picks, Jesse Bates, less than ideal. But for the most part, I think he played a pretty good game. Just got to figure out that wide receiver room. Um, you know, a team that's still kind of figuring it out. There's a lot of holes in that roster, but... Drafted rookie quarterback, first year head coach. This was not to be, you know, uh, made out to be a rebuild. That was done overnight. Let me get to the Colts 29. You know, this may upset a lot of Colts fans because you're you're probably Ryan on, on cloud nine right now. Richardson did look pretty good. Can't take that away from him. Michael Pittman had a pretty good game as well, which I was a little interested to see what his fantasy value would be, just given I didn't know how much that passing tack was going to be. Uh, a key component of that offense versus tapping into his rushing ability, he being Anthony Richardson. But, you know, some of that might also just be the Jags' defense might not be great. We'll see as the season goes on. Uh, but, you know, I think the Colts got benefited by the DeForest Buckner touchdown that shouldn't have been, and that kept that game closer longer than it should have been. I think that game would have gotten a little bit more lopsided early on, if not for that weird play. Uh, but all in all, another team that's got a rookie quarterback, first-year head coach. This is not meant to be the year. This is more so laying the foundation for years to come. Rams are up two spots. That was probably the most surprising win of any team I saw this week. You know, just at least talking about the win itself, not how emphatic it was or how big it was. Maybe that's San Francisco against the Steelers or something like that. But I, I was surprised the Rams won this game. I told a lot of people in Survivor Leagues, take Seattle. Um, and I felt very confident in saying that. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of people saying, oh, well, the Rams beat the Seahawks. They're, where are the Seahawks? Cool your Jets. One game. If, if, if the season plays out ultimately where the Rams are a better team, then we'll get there eventually with these power rankings. I'm very slow to change. It will play out over the course of a season. It doesn't need to all happen in one week. Uh, but I get the Rams up two spots. Got to give him credit. Matt Stafford played a really good game, and he's making it work with the Puka Nakulas and the Tutu Atwells of the world, which is no easy task. Uh, on the defensive side, mostly did a good job. You know, I think Aaron Donald, you know, just kind of cemented himself uh, where I think a lot of people were doubting him last year that he's still one of the best in the game. Uh, and they were able to kind of piece it together the rest of the way. And ultimately, I think Seattle's offense was a little lethargic compared to what I was expecting. So good win for the Rams. We'll see how many more of those we get this upcoming season. Broncos, yes, they're down four spots. This is another team where like my preseason sight and outlook of them sort of sours. We got closer and closer to the start of the NFL season and that kind of baked into this. So, um, if, if you've been around the channel, you, you started to notice over the last like two weeks before the season, I was like, yeah, Denver, I just don't think they're going to be very good. Um, and ultimately, you know, through one week, you know, called a victory lap. I guess I'm going to take one here. Uh, but yeah, Russell Wilson just doesn't, he's not the same guy he was in his prime in Seattle. You know, he's just not that dude anymore. Um, and that wide receiver room's deplenished. Uh, the defense is a big, stark difference from what they were playing last year. I think Patrick Tain did play really well against Devontae Adams. That's a huge win in itself, and hopefully that gives momentum for this defense moving forward, and I don't think the defense is the problem. I think the defense is the reason why this game's, this team's going to win games. It's Russell Wilson. It's the pass catchers in specific. They just go, still got to figure that out, um, and ultimately, I don't, I'm not entirely sure how Russell Wilson's 
playing style matches a Sean Payton offense. A guy who's been known for the deep ball, trying to fit into an offense that works the underneath stuff. Doesn't feel like a perfect marriage, but we'll see. Maybe I'll be wrong by the end of the year. Falcons up a spot. I'd like to be able to move up more, but also I don't think Carolina played their best game. Um, and, you know, I'd be more willing to move them up if like Drake London, Kyle Pitts also had a big game, plus, you know, Tyler Argier and B. John Robinson. But this team is who we thought they were, uh, to steal that cliche. Um, they're going to be a team that wins the ground and, you know, taps into B. John Robinson as a receiver and just basically use him as an extension of the run game. Um, and those were some of the best plays that we saw from Desmond Ritter, who continues to not look all that great. So the passing attack being so limited, I can't move them up with so much. But the defense we saw, Jesse Bates made an immediate impact, which we talked about earlier with Bryce Young. And the running backs look really good. But we already knew that about the Falcons. I'm looking for something a little different if I'm going to move them up the board heavy. Let me get the Buccaneers up a spot. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I think it's a fluke win. I don't think this is going to be like an indicator of the Bucs being better than we thought. Um, or Baker, you know, kind of leading this team in a direction where no one really thinks they're going. Um, I think the Vikings had a really rough week one. And maybe there's more issues there to tap into. Um, and the Bucs just took advantage. I, I think, you know, if not for Kirk Cousins just kind of leaving points to the board. This game plays out a little differently. But, hey, Devin White played an awesome game. The defense was really, really solid. Joe Tryon Shinka, I've been pegging him for a breakout candidate. He gets the fumble recovery early on, early on that kind of sparks the Bucks to stay in that one where it kind of felt like maybe Minnesota starts to, to pull away a bit. Uh, granted, it was early on in the game, so it's hard to tell that. But, um, yeah, solid win for the Bucks. I don't think a lot of people saw it coming, but I don't think this is a, a sign of things to come for Tampa. All right, on to uh, team number 24, and that is the Washington Commanders. I'm going to keep them put here. That was a way closer win than it had any business being. Uh, Sam Howell, there was some good stuff. Also, a couple of head-scratching decisions in there. Um, the wide receivers still look pretty good. T-Mac, Jahan Dotson, that's good to see. The offensive line, still a bit of a concern, though. So, it feels like every one positive I give this team, they find something that is a step back in the wrong direction. Uh, so, I got to keep them in the status quo. And ultimately, they beat the Arizona Cardinals. And I think there's going to be a lot of teams who say that this year. Uh, the Titans down a spot. Ryan Tannehill, man, oh, man. Uh, and he's a guy that I've always kind of had in the middle of my QB rankings. It might start to change here pretty soon. Um, Maybe age is caught up. Maybe it was just a bad week one. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, he looks really, really bad, both from a decision-making standpoint, but also ball placement. It, it was just not great. Um, so much so that you, you could almost forget about like DeAndre Hopkins in his first game in Tennessee too, you know, just because the passing attack was that lethargic. Um, Derrick Henry's still there, so that's, they're going to be able to win games kind of through that key identity that is their offense. Um, and I don't think their defense played horrible, which was which is pretty good because there were times last year that their secondary was really prob problematic. So ultimately, if Ryan Tannehill turns it around and that was just a week one bad game, this team is going to move up the rankings and I feel pretty confident in saying that. But if week one's any indication for what we're going to see this year, the Titans, uh, wow, they might be turned over to Malik Willis or Will Levis pretty soon. And hey, maybe Ryan Tannehill becomes a trade candidate. Who knows? Then we get the Raiders up three spots. Um, Part of this is just because of the shuffling that we have uh, across the boards. Um, this is not me saying that, oh, okay, I think the Raiders are the up-and-coming team. They're going to surprise everyone. No, that defense is still abysmal, and uh, the Bills need a bounce-back game this week. So I think that we'll really see how bad that Raiders defense is this week against Buffalo. But ultimately, you know, I think the offense just clicked a little bit better. I'm not saying that I think Josh McDaniels is a better coach than... Um, Sean Payton, and I'm not saying that Jimmy Garoppolo has had a better career than Russell Wilson, but right now for where those guys are at and the scheme that they're running, I, I felt more confidence in Jimmy Garoppolo running the McDaniels offense. Uh, I felt like it was a better fit. He's had you know continuity in that. He's played in it before. Um, and I also like the pass catchers more. Devontae Adams, free. Jacoby Myers, you know, prayers up. Hopefully he's all right because that hit late in the game was really scary, but he had an awesome day. Um, so, and Josh Jacobs looked really solid. So ultimately, I think a lot of the things that people are buying in with Denver, I just saw a little bit more truly there with Vegas, and that's why they got the win. But yeah, I think they're going to have some mean regression towards the mean, no pun intended, uh, this week, especially with that defense against Buffalo. Then we get the Patriots and the Bears. I'm going to keep them both here. You know, they're both coming off a loss, but ultimately I think it's, I don't know, it's a little tough for the two teams because they, they kind of lost in different ways. New England, obviously, rough start, nice bounce back. That gets you excited, right? Like you think, okay, now they got a chance to win it late. Can they do it? So what... What do you leave your thoughts with? The fact they made the comeback against the Eagles, kept it competitive, and then ultimately fell short, or the fact that they had a chance to beat the Eagles and then blew it? You know, it comes down to how you view that game and, you know, how you speak it and how you spin it. Um, I'm, I'm optimistic that they held their own against the Eagles. And ultimately, I've had a lot of people go back and react to my AFC East, you know, season predictions. And a lot of them just basically had the flaw of, like, I think the Patriots will get beat up in the AFC East 
but hold their own against everyone else. And week one, if that's any indication of what we're going to get, they may be right. And I may have gotten it wrong in my way too early you know, record predictions. But they're just going to be a good team. The defense still looks really, really solid. Christian Gonzalez looks like he's hitting the ground running. Um, I think Bill Belichick's going to work his magic there. Bill O'Brien, you automatically feel his impact. But this team still does not have a number one wide receiver. So how much of a hump can they really get over? I don't think I don't think they can do it. Uh, and then we get the Bears, too. I just think that was a rough game. I just I think... Ultimately, Green Bay tapped into the biggest weakness that Chicago has, and it's the fact they have no defensive line, so they ran the ball really well, they being Green Bay. Um, and then once they built a lead, you know, it, it came down to Justin Fields needing to win through the air, and that's not what he's good at right now. And yes, that's problematic. Yes, I'm concerned. Like, fully put me in the camp that is worried about Justin Fields now, despite how optimistic I've been. But if the game script's a little different, Chicago scores first, this game could have played out in a very different way. And then maybe it's Jordan Love who's pressing and making bad decisions or something along those lines. You tap into Justin Fields' rushing ability. Again, I think one small change, this game could have played out differently. So I'm going to keep them where they are right right now and say, hey, it was a weird week one. We'll, we'll see where they go. I just basically need to see more of Fields and Bears before I make a big indication. But because of that, if they lose again this upcoming week, they may fall pretty hard in these rankings. Then we get to the Giants. They're down a spot. Look, I had to move now because they lost and the Saints won, so they flipped spots here. But... The Giants, if they don't have that opening drive and then a blocked field goal attempt, like if they just get three points on the board, I think this game plays out very different. I think it plays entirely different. And then on top of that, if after the you know block kick for six, is it followed up then by a ball going through the hands of a receiver, popped into the hands of a waiting Cowboy defender for a pick six? Again, I think this team, this game plays out very differently. The Giants got punched in the mouth in the first round. Uh, punched twice, really. And, and that ultimately made the bet that you know that that was the script for the rest of the game and Dallas is too good of a team to forfeit 14 points to they they just are uh so I think the Giants got some bad luck basically in that first game I think they're gonna be a better team moving forward the Saints are up a spot wasn't always pretty but they did get the job done defense looks legit I I never doubted that with Dennis Allen and and who they have at least in the starting lineup if they start to get injuries we'll see but you know Marshall Lattimore gets a pick in that game he's still such a freak um Cam Jordan still playing well um and you just still got some young players so I'm waiting to see where that goes but Demario Davis still playing at a high level as well the safeties too um and then you know Derek Carr little up little down some red zone struggles don't like to see that continue from where he was last year but the receivers look really good I'm still generally optimistic about the Saints um just need to see it click on all cylinders before they move up even more uh and I thought about having the leapfrog the Steelers but all the Steelers just moved down one spot you know Matt Canada's gonna Matt Canada the offense this is going to look weird. But also, Deontay Johnson can't get back. He falls, slips. That becomes a pick for Charvius Ward when Pittsburgh's already down by seven. Again, a couple of bad plays early on really just set the tone and put this game into motion that ultimately it did take. And, you know, the 49ers wiped the floor with the Steelers. But I think that could have been changed with a few other, you know, breaks in the Steelers' way uh, early on. But Pittsburgh still generated a ton of pass rush. Um, and they still had things that they did well. Uh, but ultimately, they couldn't move the, the, the line of scrimmage on offense. Pickett, Matt Canada, the passing attack, whoever you want to give the blame to, wasn't great. Um, and now with no Deontay Johnson moving forward, I'm really worried about this receiver core because, you know, Calvin Austin's kind of a jitterbug, but we haven't seen a lot of them. And then it's Allen Robinson, George Pickens at wide, who those two guys don't separate all that much. So I am concerned about what this offense looks like moving forward, especially this week against the Cleveland Browns, who look very, very legit. Then we get to the Green Bay Packers at 16. I'll move them up, uh, but I'll keep them still behind the Minnesota Vikings. Um, I think in a head-to-head, I'd take Minnesota just because I can... I know Kirk Cousins is coming off of a rough game, but I think generally take their their careers as a whole into account. Give me Kirk Cousins uh, and give me Justin Jefferson uh, over you know Romeo Dobbs, but Green Bay will get Christian Watson back. So um, ultimately, I think the two teams are pretty even with one another because on the other side of that coin is Green Bay's defense is by far and away the better unit compared to Minnesota. So you know different strengths uh, of the two rosters, but ultimately right now keep Minnesota just ahead of Green Bay. We'll see how they fare against Philadelphia, and then we'll see how the Packers play in week two. Um, but yeah, I was I was happy to see what Matt afforded with that offense. You know, really tapping the rushing attack. I felt like they would do that this year, kind of protect Jordan Love in the games they could. And Chicago has a really bad defensive line, so leverage that advantage where you can. But there's going to come a game where Jordan Love needs to win the game for Green Bay, and I want to see what that looks like. Like I said, Minnesota's going to stay pat at 15. Man, Kirk Cousins had some throws that were special, like that touchdown to Jordan Addison. And then he had some really bewildering decisions and throws and ball placement that kind of kill drives. So not his best game. I know a lot of Vikings fans are really irritated with him. And it is, you know, especially after week one, it feels like this team's moving in a direction that will not feature Kirk Cousins as their future quarterback, which I think a lot of people would assume just given his age, his contract, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but week one makes it even easier to say that right now. So as of the current standing, I think this is going to be his last year in Minnesota uh, and maybe for the best uh, for the Vikings, especially for their cap. But 
Anyways, I think this team from week one, the strengths are still there. The weaknesses are still there. They are who we thought they were. Um, and ultimately just came up short in a weird game uh, week one. The Seahawks down three spots. Again, I just did not envision them losing the Rams. That was a really weird game um, and kind of disappointed across the board. So I'm hoping this is a take it, throw it out, forget about it. Week one never happened for Seattle. They'll get back on track. And I do trust Pete Carroll uh, to be able to do that. So that is why they stay at 14 ahead of a Minnesota or ahead of a Green Bay and teams like that, even in New Orleans. Um, but that is me pinning a lot of hope and, and trust into Pete Carroll. We'll see where it goes in week two. Because I still think this roster has a ton of talent. That was just a weird dud that laid week one. Uh, and then the Lions. Man, this kills me not to have the Lions moving up. But ultimately, I think the teams ahead of them are just better teams right now. Um, and that includes the Cleveland Browns. I know that's going to be the team that I get a lot of flack for from Detroit fans. I hear you. I see you. Um, but ultimately, your week one win, yes, while it was against the Kansas City, Kansas City Chiefs in Arrowhead on the night where they celebrate being the you know, reigning Super Bowl champs, it came without two of their three best players, Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones. And you have to take that into account. You just have to. And ultimately, you might not win that game if Kadarius Coney maybe only has two drops instead of four. Or if Sky Moore doesn't have any drops, right? Like, if not for Patrick Mahomes' pass catchers falling apart and, you know, ultimately kind of laying a dud in themselves, you know, then I think the game plays out differently. Um, so it's a win. Be happy about it if you're a Lions fan. I'm not trying to negate it. I'm not trying to steal your joy. But uh, that game plays out differently if one of two things happen. The receiving core for Kansas City does their job or Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones are playing. And, and that's why I'm excited about it. I think this is going to be a good team. But 13 feels about right. I can't move them up. Especially when the Cleveland Browns move up to 12. And, man, uh, I was already kind of moving in a direction where I thought they were going to be legit playoff contenders. And then all my kind of thoughts of why that could happen were affirmed. Um the weather kind of ruined Deshaun Watson and what his day might have looked like, so we'll see. But we did get to see the rushing score. He does have that ability. Uh, the run game still looks great. Yes, they lose Tyler Conklin, but Dewan Jones steps in and looks awesome. Uh, I think the wide receivers are really good. Uh, we'll see more of that in a game that doesn't feature a bunch of rain, including this upcoming week against uh, Pittsburgh. Hopefully no weather there. And then ultimately that defense. I mean, the secondary looked great. The corners were locked down. And then that pass rush. Miles Garrett, just like we could say about you know Micah Parsons, might be mounting his, you know, campaign for winning Defensive Player of the Year. Zedaria Smith, easily the best edge defender on the other side of the defensive line. He played great. The interior defensive line, those investments, they paid dividends. It finally feels like the Browns, that this team that has had so much excitement, it feels like the roster has been there. They just need the quarterback. And last year it didn't happen against Watson's suspension. Well, now after all these years of saying that it's going to happen for Cleveland, it feels like it is heading in that direction. Chargers are down a spot. Look, I don't want to hold this against the Chargers. Um... Look, they played a great game against another team that should make the playoffs. To be honest, especially with the Rodgers injury, I, I, I can't see uh, I, I can't see New York making the playoffs anymore. Uh, so Miami feels that much more certain to be one, um, and the Chargers went toe to toe with them, uh, and, and it was a really really fun game. All I will say is, all the Chargers fans who told me Trey Pipkins was going to have a breakout season, he was the one who let up that sack on the final play to Jalen Phillips, and ultimately it was Jalen Phillips mugging him uh, throughout that fourth quarter. That ultimately became the deciding factor and why I feel like the Dolphins were just the slightly better team than the Chargers. So maybe it's just week one. Maybe I was right. I don't think Trey Pimpin is a very good right tackle option for the Chargers. Then we get to the Jags at uh, 10. A little bit of a weird game, like I said earlier. I don't think the Colts should have stayed in it as long as they did. But it was good to see Trevor Lawrence battle through that resilience uh, or battle through that adversity, stay resilient, and still get the win for their team, especially on the road. You can never take those for granted. But him and Calvin Ridley, whew, they look legit. I'm a little concerned about this defense, though. That's why I can't move them up anymore. Uh, I'd love to, especially road division win week one. That's, that's a pretty pretty awesome thing to come by. Um, but I still have some concerns about where this roster goes long term uh, throughout the season. Let me get the Jets at nine. They're down three spots. Again, I'm not going to make any, you know, rushed, uh, you know, droppings or uh, movings up or anything like that. But three spots is going to be as big a movement you see here week one to week two. Um, and if it is indeed Zach Wilson moving forward, I would count on this team probably being towards the bottom of this column. And then maybe once we get to the week four power rankings into the column to the right where the Steelers, Saints, and Giants are. Um, it's just the way it is. And I don't think Wilson played horrible, but he definitely didn't play great. And he definitely did not uh, service the reason why they won that game. That was more so Josh Allen's poor decision-making, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But that defense is still nasty. And they still got a Garrett Wilson. They still got Brees Hall, who looked awesome. And ultimately, I think that offensive line looked pretty good in, in the run-blocking aspect of it. Pass protection, maybe not so much, but 
the run game looks like it's going to be there. So I think this team is going to be able to stay competitive, stay in games. But because of that, again, I'm not going to move anybody just off of one move. And also, this team might make a Ryan Tannehill trade. They might make a Matt Stafford trade in a couple weeks. Who knows? I don't want to rush to any judgment about the New York Jets. So we'll see where this team goes. And hey, if they're bad, they're going to fall down the rankings and your favorite team is going to move up. So just give me some time. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the top eight now. Buffalo down to eight. Yes, I know the Jets beat the Bills, blah, blah, blah. I hear you. But I still got the Bills overall as a better team. And they should have won that game. If not for Josh Allen seemingly deciding he didn't want the win. I don't know what's going on. If you guys have been around the channel, you know Josh Allen's my favorite player in the league. And it's it's really not that close. I love Josh Allen. But his decision making on Monday night was just abysmal. Uh, you can get away with the one in the first half, but the two in the second half were just atrocious, man. So um need a bounce back game out of him against the Raiders, uh, who is one of the worst defenses in the NFL. So if him and Diggs can't go crazy, and if he can't limit the turnovers against Vegas, then we have a bigger issue on our hands throughout the season. But I'm going to say he has a bounce back performance, gets back on track, and then we're going to see the Buffalo Bills that we all kind of thought they would be coming into the season. But very disappointed with their week one performance. And four spots is as much movement I had on any team here, and they move in the wrong direction with those four spots. Cowboys up a spot. Again, I think ultimately the Giants got a couple of bad breaks early on, and that kind of set the script. And then now I got to get the Flyers to Dallas. They're too good of a team to give a 14 point lead to because that defense is awesome. Dak Prescott is a good quarterback, especially when playing out in front. And then they have the pass catchers and Tony Pollard there in the backfield who looked good. The offensive line was solid and that was, you know, not with Tyler Smith playing. So they're going to get even better on the offensive line in week two. So really good team. But I do think they had some favor uh, give them that week one win. Not that they wouldn't have won otherwise, but I think that uh, made it that much more certain they were going to come up with a win in New York. Then we get the Ravens here at six. It wasn't always pretty. Uh, Lamar definitely had some ups and had some downs, but man, Zay Flowers, OBJ, I am liking the direction this wide receiver room is heading. And I can't tell you the last time I said that about the Baltimore Ravens. So uh, I think that's a huge win in and of itself. The defense wasn't overly tested by Houston. Again, with a rookie quarterback, first time OC, first time head coach, you know, a lot of newness there in Houston with their offense, but I think this upcoming week against Cincy, we're going to get a real barometer for where this Ravens defense is at and if they're going to be able to keep this team playoff competitive. So huge game up ahead for Baltimore. But all, overall, optimistic about this offense and where it's going with those wide receivers. And I think Lamar will get back on track. And the Dolphins, they move up four spots. One of the biggest movers, them in San Francisco, the highest risers that I have. And the Dolphins, I mean... I don't think anybody had any doubts that this team could be good, especially on the offensive side, as long as Tua was healthy. And you saw it. I mean, that scheme is perfect for Tua, and it's perfect for Tyreek Hill. And Jalen Waddle may not have been the superstar in this one because Tyreek was, but you still got Waddle there. You still got Braxton Berry was making a couple nice plays. You still got Cedric Wilson in the mix. Got a couple of nice running backs, too. The offensive line held up for the most part. And then the defense, yes, it gave up a lot of points, but the Chargers are going to be a good offense this year, and offense dictates action. And then ultimately, when they needed a play, Jalen Phillips was there. Bradley Chubb was there to make a play. Even Howard with a couple of nice plays defensively uh, as the game went on. So they got the pieces there. And then against bad opponents, you know, bad offenses, Vic Fangio is just gonna is gonna be a nightmare for those opposing offenses. So uh, yeah, I think this defense is gonna be plenty good when they're not playing a top tier offense like a Los Angeles Chargers, like a Kansas City Chiefs, like a Cincinnati Bengals. But hey, when you get into shootout games like that, that's why you hire Mike McDaniel. That's why you invest in a. Tyree Kill and a two attack of Iowa and a uh, Jalen Waddle. So yeah, I think one of the best teams in the NFL. I'm really impressed with them after week one. Bengals down a spot. I don't want to get carried away. It was a rain game. That's going to negate a lot of what this offense does well. When you're a pass happy team and you run into bad weather, that's going to be that's going to cause a bit of an identity crisis. And uh, that offensive line didn't look great, but I also think a lot of that is the Cleveland pass rush, which I think could end up being one of the best pass rush units in the NFL. Um, and then I don't think the defense is anything to like overreact to. I don't think there was anything great, anything bad there. It's just, I think they're going to be a pretty good unit. Uh, the Browns basically just got their number, just did it on the ground a little bit more than Cincy could. Uh, but I think week two, I think they'll have a bounce back game. Right now I am taking Cincy over Baltimore. Um, and and I'll, I'll lay the three points that it's currently at in the spread. Um, I think Cincy in that passing attack gets back on track. Ultimately, rain just got in the way. Then we get the Chiefs down two spots. Um, and I honestly, I pondered even moving them down, to be honest. I thought about keeping them at one because... I think Travis Kelsey plays week two and Chris Jones just signed a one-year deal to kind of make him happy in the, in the meantime. And just like that, the Chiefs got two of their three best players back. So, you know, if those guys were on the field week one, do they lose? To me, probably not. If Kadarius Tony doesn't, you know, drop everything that comes in his direction, do they lose? Probably not. So I thought about not even moving him down, but I did just because I think the Eagles and the 49ers deserved it. The reason I decided to have the 49ers leapfrog the Eagles was just because the wind was so dominant. And honestly, I think Pittsburgh's a better team than New England. That's why I got them ranked ahead of New England in this uh, ranking. Uh, both teams come away with road wins. You can never take that for granted. But um, while San Francisco's offensive line gave up a ton of pressure, I saw that for Kyle Shanahan and those playmakers, it doesn't matter. Chris McCaffrey's still going to make huge plays. Brandon Ayuk is 
and I mean, potentially hot take, I think he's the best pure receiver on that team. And I think this week kind of showcased that. And then Debo is just a more all-around, more well-rounded weapon uh, versus Ayuk, who, you know, doesn't play running back like Debo can. So uh, all that to say, the 49ers offense is loaded. The defense looked great. Uh, now, how much of that is Kenny Pickett, Matt Canada struggling? That remains to be seen. Well, that more of the more games played, but uh, I think this defense is going to be legit. Fred Warner was all over the place. The pass rush was awesome. Travis Ward gets a pick, um, and ultimately they pull away from Pittsburgh. While Philadelphia kind of left the door open for New England to make the comeback. Ergo, why I got the 49ers at one, Philly staying at two, Kansas City falls down to three. But guys, let me hear your power rankings going into week two of the NFL season down below. Who's number one? And let me hear how it shakes out one through 10. Who's your favorite team? Where would you put them on these rankings? And who did I have moving up too high? And who did I have fallen too low? Love to hear all your thoughts down below in the comments section heading into week two of the NFL season. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Want to see more football content like this. But until next time, my name is Teach, and I am signing off. <laughs>